Okay, hi everyone, and uh, welcome to part 5 of our Unit 7 Notes Packet. Um, we're just going to continue our discussion of circles and our discussion of um, circle, arc, and angle relationships when we draw some of these new lines that we've learned about inside these circles. And they intersect, they create angles, and we want to try to do our best to understand um, the properties related to those angles and the arcs they create. Um, so let's just get right to it. Remember, um, so first of all, again, we're in part five here, and that's going to deal with target 21. Remember in part four, it was a part of target 20 and a part of target 21. So real quick, let's read target 21, and I'll try to describe what we did in part four that was related to target 21 and the new things we're going to do now in part five related to target 21. So target 21 is, I can find measures of angles formed by lines intersecting on, inside, or outside the circle. So remember, it's all about these lines, right? Chords, secants, tangents, different lines we can draw in our circle. And when we draw multiple of them and they intersect, every time inter lines intersect, they create angles. When they create angles, they, what we call, intercept our arcs. And there's always relationships between them. Now, in target 21, we focused heavily on lines that are intersecting on the circle. There were two uh, kind of drawings or two kind of um, pictures that we worked through quite a bit and that was like this so if we had a circle let's say we had an angle like this so I'm gonna put a dot on the edge of the circle because it intersects on the circle and remember these things kind of look like this and so we had this angle represented by that red dot it inter our angle in between our angle sides intercepts this arc and what we learned was our angle always equaled our arc divided by two, right? Always. And even when we had different pictures and different setups, this was still the case as long as our intersection was on the edge of the circle. Here was our second kind of drawing. Go back to the original color scheme. So we had our circle, and then we had um, what we called like a tangent line, right? Tangent line just hits the circle in one spot, never goes through it. And then there was like a chord from this tangent line. And what we figured out was the angle between that chord and our tangent was always going to have a relationship between the arc that it intercepted. So that's represented by the blue squiggly line. And just like we just said, that angle, so our red angle down there, is going to equal our blue arc divided by 2. And again, it's because of this point right here. The intersection and the creation of that angle is on the edge of the circle. And no matter what our picture is, if our angle is on the edge of the circle, the angle is going to be arc divided by 2. Now, that was a review, right? That was a review of before. And so that, again, handles the part of the learning target regarding on the edge of the circle. So target 21 today is going to focus on angles inside and outside of the circle. And they're going to have a similar relationship, slightly different than before. And so let's investigate that now. So the theorem, if two chords intersect in the interior, interior, and so that would be inside, right? Interior means inside, exactly as our learning target says. So if two chords intersect in the interior of a circle, then the measure of each angle is half the sum of the measures of the intercepted arc. And so here's kind of how that looks. Let's say we have a chord like this, right? Chord just has endpoints on the circle, and so I'm gonna call that A, um, and we'll have another chord down here, and we'll just go around in a circle and label all four of these points. So A, then B, then C, then D, all right? And so basically what happens is this. Let's say we want to figure out, let me change the color. Let's say we want to figure out this orange angle. So that's this angle right here. Well, there is an arc across from it, right? That angle opens up to the arc that's sitting between A and B. Now, we need to think of old stuff as well because the angle we're talking about here also has a vertical angle. That's the one across the intersection from itself. Vertical angles are always congruent, so these two angles are going to be the same. And our vertical angle also opens up to an arc. And it opens up 
to the arc between C and D. And so what we're looking for here is just one of these angles, not both, just one. And the way it's going to work is, again, we have one angle here. Let's say we want to find this angle. That angle opens up to an arc. Its vertical angle also opens up to an arc. And so our angle, one more time, just one of those angles is going to equal something to do with those two arcs. And what we wrote was half the sum. And so again, we're going to have an angle there. And a kind of an equation for it is our angle will equal our arc plus our other arc divided by 2. And so we need to identify which angle we're looking at. And then we need to see, okay, what, what arc does that open up to? And then we look at the vertical angle as well. What arc does that open up to? And then we're going to add those two arcs together and divide by 2. And that will give us our angle. So let's go try to apply it. So here we go. We want angle 1, right? So that opens up to this 58 degree arc. If we look at its vertical angle, that's the other side, that opens up to the 72 degree arc. And so our angle, once again, is going to equal arc plus arc divided by 2. And so our angle is simply going to be 58 plus 72 divided by 2. And when we add 58 and 72 and we divide by 2, um, we should be getting 65 degrees. 58 plus 72, um, it's 130. 130 divided by 2, 65. All right. Now, in B, same thing, but we have to manipulate it just a little bit. Or not manipulate it, but there's an additional step here. I don't know why that keeps coming up. So here's what we want to look at. These are the arcs we know, right? And so the angle that opens up to them is this one. Now, that's not angle 1. And so the 115 doesn't actually have anything to do with angle 1 yet. It deals with this, this angle, but we don't know anything about it. Now, its vertical angle is here, and so that opens up to the 97. And so if we apply this arc plus arc divided by 2 formula, that's going to tell us what our dots equal, not what angle 1 is. But we just got to start there. And then we can use another property to deal with um, finding angle 1. And so let's do this. Our dot is going to equal 115 plus 97 divided by 2, right? Because these angles on the inside that open up to our arcs are going to equal our two arcs added together divided by 2. And so let's finish this part up and we'll get what the dot equals. And so when we add those two together and divide by 2, we get 106 degrees. Now again, I'm going to put that into our picture up here. That is not angle 1. That is like that angle, right? Now technically these are vertical, so they're both 106, right? Just mentioning that. But now I want you to look at like this line, for instance, right here. The 106 and the angle 1 form that line. We would call that a linear pair. And so if we want to find angle 1, right, these two angles together equal 180 degrees. And so measure of angle 1 is going to equal 180 minus 106. And so angle 1 is going to equal 74 degrees. Perfect. Let's keep rolling. When we get to C, this is set up nice, right? Because we want angle 1. Across from it is our 102 degree arc. Perfect. Look at the vertical angle as well. Across from that is the 194 degree arc. And so why the reason I say perfect here is because it's just set up for us, right? Our measure of angle 1 is going to equal arc plus arc divided by 2. So 102 plus 194 divided by 2. And when we do that, that equals 148 degrees. Perfect. Now, you got to be a little bit careful about typing these into your calculator. And so here I want to show you that maybe we can do it on this one. So let's work through this on our calculator just real quick. One thing I want to mention, clear this up. So you kind of have to do this in parts. So if I want to get 148 here, I really want to type in 102 plus 194 and hit enter. And that tells me 296. And then I can hit divide by 2. And that tells me 148. 
if you just type it all in at one time, no parentheses, no nothing, so like 102 plus 194 divided by 2, order of operations is going to do the division part first, and it's going to give you the wrong answer, right? 199 is not the right answer. The reason is they're doing the 194 divided by 2 first, and then adding 102. But we need to add first, and then divide by 2. So again, we want to do the 102 plus 194 separate. Oop, hit enter, and then divide by 2. And so make sure you keep that in mind. I know I only mentioned it on C, but make sure you keep it in mind on all of these and in the future as well, right? All right, now we're going to work backwards. If you look at these pictures, right, this time we don't know an arc. And so we got to work through this um, equation here to try to find the arc. So here we go. Pick your angle, right? Recognize your angle. Look across from it. That 100 degree angle intercepts our x degree arc. And then look at the vertical angle part, right? What's across from that? The 135 degree arc. And so now let's apply what we know. We know angle, so angle equals arc plus arc divided by 2. But this time we know the angle, right? And so we can put 100 in for the angle part. So 100 is going to equal arc plus arc divided by 2. And so our arcs are x plus 135. And then we got to divide it by 2. So angle is 100. Arc plus arc is x plus 135. And then we divide it by 2. And now we just need to remember how to cancel the bottom of a fraction, right? Because we want to get to this x up here. So we want to get rid of the divide by 2 part. So to get rid of divide by 2, we can multiply by 2. Remember, in algebra, we got to do it to both sides. So multiply both sides by 2. On the right, the 2s cancel, and it will leave you with just what's up on the top. And so our right just becomes x plus 135. And then the left side, actually multiply that out. 2 times 100 is 200. And then we'll subtract 135 from both sides, and we get x equals 65. 65 equals x. And remember, that's our arc this time. So that arc was 65 degrees. Now, in B, it's a similar situation to B up above when we applied a linear pair. But in B up above, remember, we were finding the angle, not the arc. So we found the other angle first and then subtracted from 180. Let's kind of work backwards on this one. We need the arc this time. And so the angles that apply to those arcs are the ones that are right, right across from it, right? And so that would be like our dots here. Those are the angles that apply to the x arc and the 69 degree arc. The 142 doesn't necessarily. And so we don't want to use the 142. But remember, the 142, oops, let's make a different line. The 142 and one of my dots creates a linear pair, right? They create this straight line. And so the 142 and where my dot is, they have to equal 180 together. So my dot will equal 180 minus 142. And so when I do that calculation, I'm going to get 38 degrees. And so I'm going to replace that. Uh, I'm going to replace my dot with 38 degrees and clean this up a little bit. So this dot, right, should have been 38 degrees. And so now I can do what I did in example. So across from my 38 is my 69 degree arc across from its vertical angle is x. Remember, it's always angle equals my arcs added together divided by 2. So 38 equals x plus 69 divided by 2. And then we'll take the same process as before, times both sides by 2. And that'll cancel our 2 in the bottom of that fraction. And so x plus 69 will equal, and remember, actually multiply this out. 2 times 38 is 76, and then we'll subtract 69 from both sides, and we get that x equals, what is that, 7? Yeah, and x equals 7. And so that's small, right? This is just a 7 degree arc, but that's how the process works. All right, timer's running down. I will, re I will reboot this video, do number C and the rest of the notepack in just a second. Um, thank you very much for your time.